This video talks about alpha thalassemia and a genetics question associated with alpha thalassemia. Now in this question, a patient comes into the ER with uh, upper quadrant pain and uh, on further exam, on further analysis, it was found that the patient had hypochromic microcytic anemia along with target cells. The patient's mother had a baby who had hydrops fetalis and the patient's uncle had HBH disease. Now the question is asking, what is the probability of the child, so the, if the patient has a baby with a genotypically normal wife or woman, what is the probability that the child uh, will, the probability of the child having the same type of anemia as the father? Okay, so that is the question. So let's get right into it. So as soon as I see target cells, a mnemonic that comes to my mind is uh, TAIL. Okay, T stands for thalassemia, A stands for anemia of chronic disease, I stands for iron deficiency anemia, L stands for lead poisoning, and when you add an S, that's sideroblastic anemia. Only TAIL itself are all the all the diseases associated with target cells. But tails all together, these are all the microcytic hypochromic anemia, right? So this is a quick way of uh, narrowing it down to four illnesses that is going to give us target cells. So now when we look at all the possibilities, we see that the patient ha could have uh, thalassemia because one of the components of target cell is that it can cause thalassemia. The patient's uncle had HBH disease. The patient's mom had a baby with hydros fetalis, and the patient has some sort of um, symptoms from of the disease. So I'm pretty sure that the patient has uh, some sort of uh, thalassemia problem. We're going to determine what it is. Now there are four possibilities of how you can have alpha thalassemia, either trait, or the disease, or symptoms. So there are four possibilities. Let's go through the possibilities. So alpha thalassemia is an autosomal recessive disease. So I'm going to refer to them as A, small a. So either the first one is the one that is asymptomatic. So you are going to have only one A missing. So it can be A, 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 and nothing blank. So you can have a possibility like this or you can have A, A, blank A, you can have that, or you could also have blank A, 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 or you could have A, blank A, A. Point is you're going to be missing one of the alpha chains. This is the form that is going to be asymptomatic. They are only going to have a little bit smaller RBC, not really microcytic hypochromic, but maybe a little bit micro on the microcytic side. So pretty much these patients are going to be carriers of the disease and they're going to be asymptomatic. Now the next one is called alpha thalassemia trait. And the reason it's called alpha thalassemia trait is because they're going to have two missing A's. So they can have either AA blank blank, or they can have blank blank AA okay that is one this is this kind of this kind of missing um, the entire one side of the of the of the allele this kind of misses missing is the since cis conf configuration but if they were missing it like this if they're missing two A's in two different configurations so let's say a blank a blank right so this would be trans okay understanding that is important and I will tell you why um, later on or they can also have another possibility is blank a uh, blank a and vice versa you can make those uh, permutations and combinations point is when they have two a's missing from the same side we're gonna call this cis configuration and when they're missing from two different sides we're going to call this trans configuration now this this kind of uh, missing two A's is alpha thalassemia trait now how do we know that this our patient has alpha thalassemia traits by the way our patient has alpha thalassemia trait and how do we know that we know that 
because with alpha thalassemia trait we get hypochromic microcytic anemia we get some symptoms but not so much but again there is there is no mention of hemoglobin H or hemoglobin BART which happens with uh, with um, hemoglobin H disease so that's why we're calling this trait okay that's that's what our patient has but let's go through the other options as well now the next one deals with something called HBH disease now in HBH disease you're going to have three of the alpha chains missing okay so either you're going to have a blank 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 or blank 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 a or you know these positions can switch so point is you're only going to have one alpha uh, chains so how are we going to make a proper hemoglobin with only one chain as a result you're going to have two uh, two different kinds of hemoglobin in your blood you're going to have HBH and you're going to have HB BART okay and what are each of these stand for HBH means that there is going to be four beta chains okay so it's going to be like so with HB BART you're going to have four gamma chains now these two different kinds of hemoglobin these are two different kinds of hemoglobin these two hemoglobin is going to be increased greatly in our patient who is going to have HBH disease okay so these hemoglobin has a very high affinity for oxygen so they're going to bind to oxygen really really tightly as a result oxygen delivery to the tissues is going to be really really bad for this kind of patient but finding this kind of hemoglobin in blood is that the only clue for having HPH disease no they're going to have other problems for example they're going to have target cells they're going to have Heinz bodies what are Heinz bodies? Heinz bodies are cells with denatured hemoglobin uh, de deposition in the cytoplasm of the red blood cell right they're going to have spleno splenomegaly all these associated problems is going to be seen in HPH disease so in our patient we saw that he did have upper quadrant pain um, you know he did have microcytic anemia but there was no mention of uh, hemoglobin H or hemoglobin B BART so we did not jump to the fact that um, he is going to have HPH disease where they specifically mentioned that the uncle has HPH disease we're going to think that the patient has HB uh, alpha thalassemia trait because he is not asymptomatic he's having some symptoms but our patient is alpha thalassemia trait now the last of all is that when there is no alpha chains at all it's completely empty now in this kind of uh, situation the type of hemoglobin they obviously they are not making alpha chains but they have to make some sort of hemoglobin they are making hemoglobin they are making HB BART okay this is where we only see HB BART and we only see the four gamma chains it does it's this is not compatible with life and we're gonna see high drops vitalis so now that we have a complete understanding of the genetics of alpha thalassemia let's talk about what is happening with our patient so now we know that the patient's mother uh, and the father okay so let's say mother and the father they made it and they produced two babies uh, one of the babies had high drops fetalis and the other is our patient now our patient we decided that our patient has trait and the baby obviously had hydros fetalis so the combinations that we can come up with if we write down the genetics of these two patients either they're going to have either the patient is going to have uh, a cis configuration or a trans configuration okay these are the two possibilities for our patient but what about the baby with hydrospitalis? The baby with hydrospitalis had no alpha chains, right? So that tells us something about the parents. It tells us that the parents must have had cis mutation because one of the mutation is coming from the mother and the other is coming from the father. So they must have had this kind of mutations. Only then they could produce a baby who had hydrospitalis. 
So now you can ask me a question that how do I know that the mother and the father are not um, asymptomatic or the first type? How do we decide that this is going to be either trait or hemoglobin H disease? The way we can determine that is with hemoglobin H disease, there is no way these parents would have been able to make two babies, okay? And one of them having a trait. So that means this patient must have these uh, parents must have um, trait in order to make babies, right? So that's how we know that these, these two people have traits. And how do we know that both the mother and the father have trait? That's because they produced a baby with no alpha chain. So, so the baby kind of mutated uh, the cis configuration from both the parents, right? So that's why we know that the mother and the father had trait. Also, the mother had a brother who had HBH disease, so only one alpha chains, meaning that the brother and the mother came from parents who had um, a trait, and the other patient, and uh, the other parent had a trans configuration. What do I mean by that? So either the parents of the mother and the brother had uh, one patient, one parent like this and the other parent like this. Only that way they could make one baby like this and the other baby had um, this and this making which came to the brother making hemoglobin H disease. So but that's going beyond. It's just understanding the whole, I, uh, whole concept of the question. But going that far may not be necessary. We already know that the mother and the father had trait and they were both in the cis configuration because they made a baby with hydros vitalis. So now let's come to the original question. The original question said that if the patient and a normal genotypically female, so N for normal, made it, what would be the probability of having a child with the same type of anemia as the father? Okay, so let's let's find out. So the father or the patient is going to have, let's say, AA blank blank, and the, and the mother is going to have AAAA. So if we do our Punnett square, we're going to get, this is the simple and the easy part of the question. So let's say this is the mother, AAAA and AA blank blank. So we're going to get AA, 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 blank, blank, AA, blank, blank. So the probability of the child having the same type of an anemia as the father is 50% or half.